To say you gotta know somebody or know somebody to get somewhere these days. Good afternoon. To you know You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate somebody. Radio. I'm Phil Falcone with my co-host Jeremy Ricci here on WWDB 860 AM Studios high atop the City Line Avenue skyline every Thursday at 3 and every Saturday at 6. If you want to ask us a question or you have a real estate need, give us a call at 267-988-2000. Addicted to real estate. Let me tell you who we are. We buy houses. If you've got a house for sale or you've got an ugly vacant house in your neighborhood, give me a call. Maybe we'll come on down and buy it. Are you a real estate agent or a realtor? Did you ever know there was a difference? Well, there is. We have three agencies, one in Hatboro, one in Montgomeryville, and one in Huntington Valley. And we specialize in working with investors who want to be agents and agents who want to be investors. We also do investor and realtor education meetings every month. You can check that out at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two, addictedtorealestate.com. Just go to that website, put your name and email address in, and I'll send you an invitation to all of our meetings coming up. And we've got a bunch of meetings coming up this month. The next one is September 14th. We're going to be at... Maggie's Waterfront Cafe, right off the Academy Road exit of 95 in Northeast Philadelphia, where the Linden Avenue boat docks are. If you've ever hung out down there, it's a beautiful area right on the Delaware River. And Maggie's has a wonderful second floor where we're going to have our meeting with, with windows all the way around so you can watch the sunset and you can see the boats going by and you can learn about real estate investing. So, what's up, Jeremy? How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm just uh, really excited about all the deals we have going on. It's it's just amazing, this business, both in Florida here and in in the Philadelphia area and the suburbs. We've actually re-ventured back into the city of Brotherly Shove. (laughs) We're we're back in Philadelphia with a couple deals here, which we haven't been in a while. We mostly invest in the suburbs. So, uh, you know, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. You know, if there's money to be made, you know, who cares? I don't think we're going to keep these things long term. We're going to... we're going to, you know, quick turn them, and, uh, and I think it'll be good. It'll make some money. Yeah, you know, um, if we're keeping things long term, it's kind of a sore topic for me in the city. I've been investing in Philadelphia for a long time, and they've sort of uh, browbeat me into the suburbs over the years, uh, the way the city treats landlords. But we have an amazing deal in Philadelphia right now. It's a beautiful neighborhood in 19115, right near the corner of Varee Road and Welsh Road. It's a single-family home, and in that neighborhood, the comps are pretty strong in the high twos and actually a few comps that are above 300000 And we can sell you this house right now for about half the price. That's right. But you'd already know that if you had put your name and email address in at AddictedToRealEstate.com because I emailed that out this weekend. So if you're interested in learning more about it, shoot me an email, phil at AddictedToRealEstate.com. That's with the number two, phil at AddictedToRealEstate.com, and maybe I'll send you a details of this house. How would you like to buy a house for about $160,000 in a neighborhood where the comps are strong, high twos, and above 300000 that's half the price, folks. You can make some money on that. This place needs a lot of work, but if you're interested in doing a flip, if you've been watching flipping shows your whole life, and maybe it's time that you want to do one yourself, here's your opportunity. And this house is amazing as far as the transformation goes. If you've seen the, the, the pictures on either my Facebook or Phil's Facebook, look up Phil Falcone and Jeremy Ricci on Facebook and send us a friend request. There's some. This thing was just shrouded in shrubs and trees and it's just amazing like you couldn't even see the house and all of a sudden we had a guy cut the trees down and uh boom, voila there's a house behind hey, all it's that like, oh is that what we bought <laughs> yeah. so uh what are we talking about when we come back yeah let's talk about let's talk about this deal and we could talk about some of the other deals we have going okay. on and uh hey I, i'm getting my uh, florida real estate license so i'll tell you a little bit about yeah, that that's interesting so. i'd like to hear about that so when we come back we're going to talk about this deal in uh bustleton section of Philadelphia, you're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. 
As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. I can't stand this traffic. I need a vacation. Slip away to Siesta Key in Sarasota, Florida. You can stay at one of our vacation rentals at the number one rated beach in the United States. Check out GoSiesta.com where you can rent a fully furnished vacation rental for less than the cost of a stinking hotel room. Check out GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. That's 863-2-SIESTA or GoSiesta.com. GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. I'm going! When dealing with your home financing, you need a lender you can trust. A mortgage lender like Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services Incorporated. The purchase of your home will likely be the largest financial investment you will make in your lifetime. Work with a mortgage provider who considers your long-term financial goals and puts you first. Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services will provide you competitive mortgage rates and service beyond belief for every step of the loan process. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649 today to visit about your mortgage needs. Thomas Farris, NMLS, number is 785398. First Choice Loan Services Incorporated, NMLS, number 210764, equal housing lender. Robinson Insurance Group is addicted to real estate's preferred insurance broker. Why deal with an insurance agent who only represents one company? Robinson Insurance Group can quote you all the companies and shop to get you the best insurance for your needs. Fix and flip, landlord coverage, last minute deals, no problem. Investor deals are no issue and nobody is ever denied. Call Robinson Insurance Group, 215-918-2555. That's 215-918-2555. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for four ninety five a month at Executex Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms. You get the mailboxes. You get the printer, the copy, the scanner. You get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701. 215-942-7701. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. I'm Phil Falcone with my co-host Jeremy Ricci. And let's see what Jeremy wants to talk about now. What's on your mind? I think we should talk about this deal. It's uh, this this house that we bought is just so reminiscent of my start in the business. And the thing that this deal has in common with the first house I ever bought in real estate back in 2002 was uh, the fact that it's a hoarding house. I love hoarding houses. <laughs> and by that I mean there's literally three. 30-yard dumpsters full of stuff inside the house. Maybe more. Maybe more, yeah. And the, the one that I – I think we had six dumpsters on the first house that I bought. Now, I, that was a wholesale deal. I just wholesaled it. But I did uh, kind of document what happened after I wholesaled it to the guys that I sold it to. This house, on the other hand, uh, we're going to clean and sweep it is the technique where we're going to basically take all the contents out of the house. I told you about the trees, how we've unshrouded the house with trees. It was like a uh, – it was like a, uh, you know – a transformation in in this uh, this the curb appeal. You couldn't even see that there was a house there. And now we're going to take out all the insides, all the contents of the house. We're going to have several dumpsters. They're swapping out dumpsters, bringing bringing a new dumpster, taking out the filled one, and uh, we'll we'll have a clean and swept house pretty soon. And you guys can check out that deal if you. I'm not going to give you the address on the radio, but you can get the address if you go to addictedtorealestate.com and put your name and email address in. You'll see the blog post. You'll see details on that on that property. It's it's an it's a juicy deal, I would say. 
So. Yeah, it's a good deal. And you, actually, I don't know that I uh, put the blog post up on uh, Addicted to Real Estate, but I did put it on YouTube. I did put it on Facebook. So if you Facebook Phil Falcone, uh, you'll be able to see it. Or Jeremy Ricci, you'll be able to see it, R-I-C-C-I. You'll be able to check it out. And um, another way to get it would be to email me. If you just want to email me, email phil at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two, phil at addictedtorealestate.com. And so I a, lot, a lot of people would want to know some particulars about, you know, just transacting and how we do deals. And um, I would it would start with, how did you guys find the deal? So right. how well, did let, you find Let's the deal? start talking about that. So um, one of the things that we do really well is let people know what it is that we do for a living. We're addicted to real estate. We walk around with name tags that say, Hello, my name is Phil Falcone, and I'm addicted to real estate. We drive cars or trucks that have I buy houses on the side of it. Not a lot of, uh, you know, hidden messages in that advertising technique. I buy houses. Here's my phone number. Call me. So we're very good at letting lots of people know what it is that we do. And by the way, having a radio show that tells people what we do, that doesn't hurt either. So that's one of the ways that we find a lot of deals. Because we're addicted to real estate, we're constantly talking about it. We're constantly in the business, networking with people, morning, noon, and night. And when you do that, you know, people who know us know that we buy houses. And a friend of mine who I do some business with, he gave me a lead for a house. And the uh, I called the owner. He gave me the guy's phone number. I called the owner. I talked to him for a little while. And um, we made an appointment to get together. And I, I, before I ever went to see the house, he told me what the price was. He told me what the price of the house was going to be. He told me that the house was a, a total wreck and that it was a hoarder's house. So when I went out there, I was pretty, you know, pretty prepared for seeing a hoarder's house. I didn't just – didn't realize I was going to see the worst hoarder's house I've seen in decades. But – that's just junk that can be removed. So that kind of house is actually a great investment opportunity because 90% of your investors see that and they're terrified. And all that really means to me is I need to get a bunch of dumpsters and some people to throw all this stuff out. Well, most importantly, it also precludes the homeowner from advertising it and listing it on the MLS. You know, A house like that, nobody's going to say, well, let me get a real estate agent and list that thing. So they're going to come to people like us and, and look for an investor to buy the house. And I think that that the the, uh, the opportunities that we get because of the, the situations with the house or the situations with the people tend to come up because of, of, you know, uncomfortable circumstances or, you know, a lot of people don't want to fix up their house to get it ready for the market. Some people just um, – don't want to go through. They think they're going to have to put repairs into the house, and they don't want to put the money out of the pocket to do those repairs. Owner occupants couldn't really buy the property because the owner occupant might, um, you know, a bank's going to have to do an appraisal. The appraisal's going to have to come through. There's underwriting guidelines. And, yeah, uh, I, I figure when a house is a hoarder's house, it's probably pretty difficult to get conventional financing from a bank because they they can't appraise it. They can't even walk in it. So they can't really see it, and I, I think it would be harder, but I really wouldn't know because we hardly ever do bank financing. We pretty much use private investors to finance all of our deals, and we do that. Uh, that's something else that if you come to our meetings, we'll teach you how to do that. Using private investors is an amazing way to buy property. It allows us to move extremely quickly. How quickly do we have to move for this deal? <clears throat> Very quickly. We had to buy this house in one week's time. So I met the owner at the house. He showed me the property. And I simply said to him, he, when, we, when we were finished touring the property, we went outside. He leaned against the car. And he said to me, he said, so what do you think, Phil? And I said, this was my great negotiating technique. I want you to listen to this and remember it. I said, uh, <clears throat> okay, I'll buy the house. And the reason I did that is important. The price I paid for this house is approximately one-third of the after-repair value of this house. And if you can pick up a house with those kind of ratios, then regardless of what kind of repairs it needs, you're probably going to do pretty well with the house. So it doesn't take a mathematical genius to be in this business. It doesn't take a software program to analyze this property. It doesn't take me to even grab my calculator and think about it for more than 10 seconds. 
I know it's a deal right then and there. I also knew, because the seller uh, had told me, the previous owner had told me, that he had already had quite a few people looking at it, and they were all offering him very low numbers. And he was the type of person who got insulted when you did that. He wanted his number, so all you had to do was ask him what his number was and then give it to him, which was a pretty fair number for the house, actually, considering all the uh, cost of the the five 40-yard dumpsters I'm going to have to have in there and all the labor to throw. I mean, we might end up spending $5,000 just getting rid of all the trash in the house, and we're going to spend another uh, $5,000 removing all the trees and everything. And uh, But we can still, even if we absorb these costs, we could still sell this house to somebody for about half the cost of the after repair value. Now, let's talk a little bit about what your experience was because you were over there and uh, you said the, the neighbors were stopping you. And what, what was going on with that? Well, sometimes when you buy a house, um, in the past, I've always thought, well, these neighbors are going to love me. This is a really ugly house. And here I am to fix this house up. So I'm feeling like the hero. I'm feeling like the big star in the neighborhood. And in my career, personally, I have not experienced that behavior by people. Typically, they just ignore me or they uh, sometimes even have gotten mad at me, like your roofers are making too much noise and that kind of stuff. So I've had some really unusual experiences with the neighbors when I was fixing up a house, but not in this neighborhood. For the first time, 27 years I've been in this business, I was the star. On Saturday, I stopped by the house. Trees were being cut down. Guys, it was all these big, strong guys in the yard chopping down trees, throwing them into the chipper, throwing out couches and refrigerators and all kinds of stuff. It was real chaos. And um, neighbors were pulling over like every 10 minutes. People were saying... You bought that house? You're going to fix up that house? Thank you, man. Thank you. One lady even wrote me a semi-love letter. But I don't want to talk too much about that because, you know, my wife might find out about it. So. <laughs> but she uh, she lives behind the house and she just, you know, she said, I heard your name is Phil. I saw your I Buy Houses car out front. And I just want to want you to know that I love you. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I'm going to have to call her. Just, just... <laughs> An old lady that... Uh, oh, I didn't say she was old, did oh, okay. I? No, I don't know. I thought did you, you did, did before. Did I thought you, you said that to me. You know, I just said... You know. oh. Anyway, I like older ladies, so yeah. you're not going to... You know, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> All right. So, That's uh, great. Anyway, so this is how we got the house. We got a lead. I did my brilliant negotiation technique. And there's lots of different things that you could do with a house like this. One thing you could do with it is just wholesale it, sell it to somebody else. Another thing you could do is you could flip the house. But what what Jeremy hinted about, what we like to do with houses, is what we call clean and sweep. Why don't you explain that a little bit, Jeremy? So basically, we need to take the house where more people would be willing to buy it. There's very few people that would be willing to take on a project that's a hoarding house. And, you know, people get turned off by that. So my whole philosophy was let's let's get the place broom swept and... uh, and get more people in the door. So we'll list it on the MLS as soon as it's cleaned out, put it on a lockbox, and get the trees so you can see the house, get the trees out of the way. You know, I was looking at the fascia that was hanging down. I don't know if we should mess with that. Maybe we should, you know, just throw a couple pieces of aluminum on there or something, make it look nicer from the street. But at the end of the day, it's a fixer-upper, so we're going to sell it as a fixer-upper. We've, we've uh, frankly, had a uh, surprisingly – difficult time recently retailing houses like fixing them up and retailing them i think i thought that this stuff would fly off the shelves but uh maybe we need to spend a little more time staging them maybe you know something else but for some reason we've always been good at selling houses to investors maybe because that's who our contact list is <laughs> investors maybe because so. that's who we are so yeah, we understand right. investors so if you're an investor out there and you think you might have some interest in this house shoot me an email phil at addicted to real estate.com with the number two I'll send you back some details. I'll give you a video of the house. Maybe I'll even let you get in to see it. It is not on the MLS just yet. We love to sell properties to the people who come to our meetings, to the people who listen to our radio show. Why? Because you guys are supporting us. You guys are kind of like our uh, our family, our extended family. And everybody knows that you like extended family more than you like your own family. And you can save a little money too, you know. If there's not commissions involved, although if you are a real estate agent, you know you, you can get you can get some money out of those deals. So if you don't have your real estate license and a property's on the MLS, 
get your real estate license. We're going to talk about that in the uh, the next segment. I want to tell you a little bit about what we're doing in Florida and why I decided it was a good thing to get a, go get a real estate license down there. Yeah, I definitely want to hear about that. But be, before we go on to that, I want to talk a little bit more about this subject property we're discussing. I've, I've been there a couple of times now since we bought it. And now that you can actually see the house, i got to tell you, the numbers say high twos and a couple of comps. I believe there's two comps over 300,000. But i got to tell you, I grew up in this neighborhood. I grew up in Bustleton, all right? I went to St. Albert's. I lived in this section of the city uh, my whole life. And i got to tell you, this is a really cute little neighborhood. I drove around some of the streets on Saturday night. I had a bunch of people at my house, and I, I just felt like working. So I took off for a couple of hours. I, after all, I'm addicted to real estate. So my, my wife was doing a big... Dinner, it was like 15 people at my house, and I said, you know something, I'm going to drive around and go check out check out my house. And I drove around the neighborhood, and it's a really cute neighborhood. Everybody seems to take care of their properties. I mean, and everybody's got some really nice properties. The two houses that are right next to this house, that this house is sandwiched in between. I mean, they're lovely houses. New siding, new windows, manicured landscaping. The house next door has a, a gorgeous red brick wall surrounding the whole property that only goes up like three feet. It's like a decorative wall. It's not a wall to keep people out. It's a wall to accentuate what the yard looks like. And then on top of that red fence, it's got a beautiful black wrought iron fence. I mean, big bucks spent in this neighborhood. Even in the video, the the house behind it, I think you put in the video, and that was really nice, too. The house behind it's nice. The house next to it's nice. The two houses across the street are nice. Really cute area. So People always say buy diamonds in the rough. And I actually say buy the rough in the diamonds. That's yeah. what you're talking about. Buy the rough house well, in the neighborhood. the roughest diamond on rough. this block. But, <laughs> but I'm sure that somebody who buys it, and maybe it'll just be us who does it, it depends, uh, will take this thing to the next level and make it into a beautiful house. But it's a really cool area. And if anybody knows, I'll give you a hint. If anybody knows where Bustle and Swim Club is, it's very close to the Bustle and Swim Club. I used to swim in that swim club 30 years ago. So I know this area really well. And this, this house is a real winner. So uh, anything else you want to talk about before we go to break? Say no, about just, the house? I'm just uh, – I saw the video. I, I like that you reshot the video because the first video was like sideways and we're like yeah. cocking our heads. But this video turned out great. Yeah, it was, this video uh, was good. Yeah. Nice little walkthrough. You should, you should hear uh, Phil's – Feet crunching through the stuff that was on the ground. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, it was amazing, and that was even after you had taken a dumpster. That out. was after I took forty yards of trash out of there. So there's yeah. still a lot of trash to get out of there. Just remember one thing: if you're interested in buying this house, this is probably the kind of a deal that's not going to get done with bank financing. This is going to need to be like a cash offer or some kind of private lender that's lending you the money so that you can act very quickly. Because if we're going to do the deal. It's with you. It's going to have to be a deal that gets done quickly and easily. Yeah, it's going to be a cash closing. And cash, it could be, it doesn't have to be your cash. It could be hard money. It could be private money. So uh, I would say, you know, you have to have cash on hip to do it. But it's it's a phenomenal deal. Some great profit margins in it. And I think we're going to start increasing the price as we start fixing up the yeah, place. The longer yeah. we work on it, the more expensive it's going to be. Yeah. But um, when we come back, we're going to talk to you about some really big deals that we bought this weekend, because we just got back from Florida. And when we come back, we're going to tell you all about that, and you'll be shocked that we're even talking about this one, because we got some real big deals on the plate. All right, you're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. Have you heard about the recent low mortgage rates? Have you started thinking about refinancing your home? Why not work with a mortgage lender who puts you first? Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services Incorporated will provide you personalized service to make sure your home financing meets your needs both now and in the future. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649 today and learn how the current low interest rates may mean it's the right time for you to buy or refinance. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649. Thomas Farris, NMLS, number is 785398. First Choice Loan Services Incorporated, NMLS number 210764, Equal Housing Lender. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia... 
I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is Addicted to Real Estate with the number two dot com. Robinson Insurance Group is Addicted to Real Estate's preferred insurance broker. Why deal with an insurance agent who only represents one company? Robinson Insurance Group can quote you all the companies and shop to get you the best insurance for your needs. Fix and flip, landlord coverage, last minute deals, no problem. Investor deals are no issue and nobody is ever denied. Call Robinson Insurance Group, 215-918-2555. That's 215-918-2555. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215 942 Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. All right, my main man, Jeremy. What's, tell everybody what we got going on in Florida. So I'm pretty excited that we're, we're doing some big deals down there. You know, it's, it's funny how we, uh, we do like little, you know, there's, I have a mentor that has a book called Making It Big on Little Deals. And we've definitely done that. We've definitely done a lot of little deals, but we're... We're breaking into uh, you know some bigger things. Uh, so does that mean make it really big on really big deals? You know, like you, Phil's book Addicted to Real Estate kind of talks about the trials and tribulations and the ups and downs of commercial real estate. And I can see uh, the big numbers. You know, it could have a, a big impact one way or the other, right? That's right. It sure so could. You it could, could, it you could, could be, cream you or it could make you rich. So you have to be very careful when you're getting into those deeper waters with, with real estate and, and bigger numbers. But I'll tell you, it's still just a numbers game. Uh, and you add a zero on the end, and the number is still – it's the same thing. Just add a zero. The rents go up with a zero at the end. The uh, the prices go up with a zero at the end. So it's uh, – you know, if you do a 10 times multiplier on all your income and all your expenses, you know, it's, a, it's a great way to pick up some equity, to get, pick up some cash flow. And it's nice – you know, buying multiple properties in one deal. So, so what's the property? So the one that <laughs> the one that I'm really excited about. There's a couple of deals here, and, and then I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about why I'm getting my real estate license down there. But the uh, the first one is is pretty neat. We're you you guys know that we're in Siesta Key, the number one beach in the United States. We're we're buying these houses in Siesta Key. Number one rated beach in the United States. Better than California. Better, better than, than Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah, number one beach, and it's because of the 99.9 percent quartz crystal. Which, uh, if you've never seen the sand in Siesta Key, it's like uh, it's they have to measure the brightness like they measure the brightness of copy paper. It's probably like a 92 brightness <laughs> or something. <laughs> I gotta warn you, okay? If anybody goes to Siesta Key, you'll never want to go to the Jersey Shore again. And I have a and I have a property in the Jersey Shore. It ruined it for me. Yeah, you can literally lay on the beach on the sand. And there's people that lay on it with no towel. And uh, the reason is it's it's cool to the touch, and it's it's a phenomenal beach. And so. it's so soft. The minute you step on it, you, you take your shoes off. You got to take your shoes off. Do that in the Jersey Shore, and you'll you'll be you'll be your feet will be burned worse than those people at the Tony Robbins event. Yeah, right. They stepping on charcoal and stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. funny. So we, so this deal is pretty neat. We're we're buying a place that's a it's an RV and mobile home park, and it's a small one. It's not not too big. It's fifteen. 15 spots, 15 units. Two of them are mobile homes. The other 13. Why am I telling everybody 16? Well, it is 16 because there's a there's a possibility to put a second floor on a rec hall. Like there's a recreational hall building that you could put a second floor on. So that that would be the 16th. Uh, it's going to obviously take some capital expenditure to to build that second floor up. It's uh, I think it's about uh, 35 feet by 35 foot 
building that we could then have a, you know, some sort of a apartment above it. And we love the short-term rentals. So this would be a phenomenal short-term rental. But let me tell you about what my vision is for the RVs. We're going to take the RVs out of there, and we're going to put these tiny houses like you see on TV, and we're going to rent tiny houses for short-term vacation rentals. So I, I, I watch these TV shows with the tiny houses, and I fear, and I'm thinking to myself, why in the world would somebody live in one of those tiny little things? And uh, con- most people want composting toilets, and they want like off the grid and no mortgage and all this stuff. I'm just looking at it for the money and saying, you know what? Let's go after the people that love those shows and rent a tiny house for a week. And if we do that, I, I think there's a lot of people that would like to experience that just as a as a novelty. I mean. If you're going to go on vacation, would you rather take selfies in a hotel room or would you rather take selfies in a tiny house? So we're going to make these things pretty uh, spectacular. We're going to probably do – I don't understand do... that question. I don't really take that many selfies. Oh, okay. Well, you know, when you're on vacation, you take pictures, don't you? Yeah, I guess so. You yeah. just turn the camera to other people. Yeah. You don't turn it to yourself. <laughs> so so when – but, you know, the whole idea is that if people take pictures on vacation, you're going to stay at a hotel room. You're going to take pictures of the hotel room? No, but you're going to take pictures of the tiny house, aren't you? And – and I don't know why would, you would live in one full time. You know, there's some, some people that do, obviously, but staying in one for a week would be pretty cool. You know, uh, we we're we we're talking about it, saying, look, look, if you could stay in a vacation rental treehouse for a week, would you do it? They're like, yeah, some people would, some wouldn't. You know, they're gonna have all the amenities. We're not off the grid in these. We're we're talking. The toilet actually flushes. <laughs> you don't have to scrape sawdust and put it over top of. <laughs> And then air conditioning, we're going to have those mini split systems in there to do air conditioning. So it's going to have nice amenities. They're going to be all dialed up like uh, beach beach houses. Uh, I'm thinking some of them have metal roofs. Maybe some of them have tiki hut thatched roofs. And they're going to be re- really cool. And you're going to be within walking distance or, yeah, you know, it's a long walk but a short bike ride uh, to the beach. And we also have the Siesta key free rides, the guys that'll come by and pick you up in a cool little Volkswagen thing or a little minivan or golf cart or something. And take you right to the beach, grab your, grab your beach chairs. And, uh, it'll be tiny house for a week. Dot com. Pretty something. cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, so it'll be neat. It's a neat idea. It's, it's, I think it's gonna, it's gonna go like gangbusters. It's a, all the craze right now, these tiny houses. And, uh, it's a way to experience one without, without taking the plunge into, downsizing your whole life into one of these things. And if anyone out there is in the TV business and you want to get involved in uh, uh, directing, producing, filming our tiny, ho- our tiny house resort. trailer, resort, beach house, park, um, give us a call, 267-988-2000, because we are going to be shopping this concept to the television shows. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, so as as we're down there, we did uh, Phil and I went down to do some due diligence and walk the property and check out what's going on because this is we've never owned a mobile home park or an RV park. This is the first one that we're buying, and you know there's different things. We're used to inspecting houses and looking at at the uh, electrical panels and the heating systems. Well, in this case, we're we're looking at you know as far as maintenance goes on the property, we're we're just going to own the the ground, and there's you know. The only improvements to the ground are the water and the sewer, and there's these electrical pedestals. And these trailers, they come up and they literally, like, hook up a hose, hook up the sewer line, and it almost looks like a uh, almost looks like a, a dryer uh, vent. Yeah, it's you know? really simple. Yeah, and, or a vacuum hose. It kind of looks like a vacuum hose. That, like, boom. <laughs> and uh, and then, then they hook up their electrical, and it's this little pedestal, and that's all it is. It's like 10 minutes, and you're hooked up. 10 minutes, and you're disconnected. You know, people go to these RV parks and they just go for a weekend. So these uh, the people that happen to be there now are mostly annual rentals where they, he has the RV. People are staying in their in their RVs or their or motor homes and they're parked there, you know, permanently. And uh, we're going to, you know, anytime you can chop something up into smaller components, like in, the, in, in this case, we're chopping it up into time and renting it out by a week, by the week instead of by the year. It's going to, the, the numbers are going to, are going to pop for sure. It's going to be a profit booster. Well, if you're a good real estate investor, what you always want to be doing is, first of all, buying well. So you want to be buying properties in a method for which that you're uh, building equity for yourself the moment you buy it. You're making money the moment you buy it. But what we're doing with this property is making money when we buy it, but we're also doing what I would describe as a value play. We're going to add a lot more value to this park 
than the current owner has. What he's doing right now is RVs are coming and going, and he's just renting out the ground to these RVs at approximately 600 bucks a month. He's got 15-something spots. He's making a little over $10,000 a month in gross income. We're going to take these RVs, and we're going to move them down the road, get them out of there, when their lease is up, of course. We're going to get them out of there, and we're going to buy or manufacture tiny homes that we own. We're going to sit these tiny homes on the ground. Now, why would we do that? Okay, First of all, I can't go around and rent other people's RVs out. I could, but I, they live in them, so that would be a little difficult. So we get the RVs out of the way, we put the tiny homes in there, and now we own the tiny homes. So what can we do with tiny homes when we own them, and they're in Florida, and they're very close to the beach? We can rent them out as vacation rentals. And people pay outrageous amounts of money to get down to Florida in the wintertime, as well as pretty much the rest of the year, just at different rates, but very, very busy place all 10 months of the year. So you can really do well down there. And we're going to turn these vacation rentals into a business where we can rent them out for much more, probably somewhere in the range of 1000 bucks a week, even if we only rent each one for two weeks out of every month on average. Now you got $2,000 a month coming in from just one home, and we got 15 of them. So if you do the math, we just uh, uh, really ramped things up dramatically uh, above the ten thousand dollars a month. So what is that? You're twenty four thousand per house. So you're at two hundred forty thousand in gross. Yeah, income. what's it come out to a month? Or no, no, no. It's more than that. It's two hundred forty thousand. I'm sorry, twenty four thousand times uh, fifteen units is three hundred and sixty thousand dollars per year. So okay, that's well, pretty phenomenal. And you well, know, well, 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 what I'm looking at just a monthly number, okay? Because I did tell everybody it was making a little over ten thousand a month. Thirty thousand a month. So if we did it. At 2000 a month and 15 units, we take a rent roll that's 10000 a month, we bump it to 30000 30000 a now, month, yeah. we're going to have more expenses. We're going to have to buy 15 tiny homes. I mean, they could cost thirty grand a piece or more. Uh, some of them are as high as sixty grand a piece or even more than that. It depends on what you get. So it's a really interesting project because we're, out gonna, we're really going to go out and buy 15 more uh, domiciles for people to live in We've never bought tiny houses before. We've never really bought RVs before. But the concept is the same. You can rent it out to people who are going to pay you money for it. So that's pretty interesting angle on a piece of real estate. Now, here's another interesting component on the deal is the owner is financing 78% of our purchase. So the, so there's owner financing on 78%. So that's that alone is just phenomenal. So the owner wants to uh, retire, and he doesn't want the management hassle anymore, and he just wants an income stream. And that's often why people sell with owner financing. They want the income stream but without the hassle. So he's agreed to finance most of the deal, and uh, that's that's huge. In fact, it's a 20-year note, 20-year financing. And he even said he doesn't want us to pay it off early. So he said if we sell the place, we, we need to walk the financing to another property because he just wants to get his check every month. Well, uh, pretty smart. you could write a uh, pretty good book about the different techniques that we're using on this one deal alone. Uh, seller financing, uh, value play, what I like to call value play, tiny homes replacing RVs, you know, tripling the gross cash flow. Vacation rentals. Yes, vacation rental angle. There's a lot of strategies yeah, being sure. applied here. And, you know, we don't even think about it anymore because and, we're addicted to real estate. And equity financing because right. we're going to bring in equity partners on the on the financing. Possibly, deal, so yes. Be, we yeah. haven't done that part yet, but when we do that. Yeah. If you guys like to learn more about how the creative geniuses at Addicted to Real Estate put these kind of deals together, all you got to do is come to Maggie's Waterfront Cafe September 14th at 6.45 p.m., right by the Academy Road exit of 95 in Tarsdale, right by the Linden Avenue Boat Docks. If you know where the Linden Avenue Boat Docks is, you can see the Boat Docks from Maggie's Bar. So let's talk about something else. we got a couple minutes here before we go to break. Since I just mentioned that this trailer park could be a good book, I actually have written another book. My second book is out. And today is Thursday, and I'm going to do the listeners here a little favor, and I'm going to give you my book for free. Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, up to the 27th of August. 
All you have to do is go to Amazon.com and you can get the book for free. After the 27th, you're going to have to pay a whopping $20 to learn how to be rich. But today I'm going to save you that $20 and just go to Amazon.com. And you can look at my name, author, Phil Falcone, or you can look at... What's the up, name of the book? Yes, I'm getting to the name of the book. It's called How to Buy Houses with None of Your Own Money. How to Buy Houses with None of Your Own Money. Yeah, it's a great book. It, it documents all the different strategies that we use in the business and how you, too, can get started in real estate investing with none of your own money. It's not no money. It's none of your money. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. You did a great job on it. Thank you. One of the things that I love about this book is I believe that my writing style is very interesting, and here's why. This is not a how-to-do-it book. How to do it books are boring, okay? They're just, they'll put you to sleep, all right? This is a how I did it book. I'm going to talk about deal after deal after deal. This is a house. Here's the house. Here's a picture of the house. Here's what I paid for it. Here's how I got somebody to sell it to me for that price. Here's what we did next. You'll learn an amazing amount. Storytelling is what I love to do when I'm trying to teach somebody how to do real estate investing. When someone tells you how to do it step by step, it's very difficult to remember these steps because it's kind of boring. Well, it's not a theory to right. in this case, you know? Right. But when someone tells you how they did it, how they give you the story of this house, you see the picture of the house. You associate the story with the picture of the house, and all of a sudden you remember it. And then when you're standing in front of a potential deal, you're going to say, wait a minute. What would Phil Falcone and Jeremy Ricci do on this house? This is just like that Walnut Street deal that he wrote about in his book or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's, great. that's it. That's it. All right. So what are we going to talk about when we come back? I want to talk about a couple offers that we put in and uh, why I decided to get my real estate license. Yeah, I that's think, good uh, stuff. We might even have a guest show up. We we got a friend of ours who's supposed to come in, and uh, he says he's on his way. So if he He's makes doing it, an eviction right now. So yeah, as long yeah. as the eviction goes yeah. well, he'll be in here. And he for didn't want to miss his eviction because <laughs> those things are fun, all right? So you're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. Hi, my name's Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is addicted to real estate with the number two dot com. Robinson Insurance Group is addicted to real estate's preferred insurance broker. Why deal with an insurance agent who only represents one company? Robinson Insurance Group can quote you all the companies and shop to get you the best insurance for your needs. Fix and flip, landlord coverage, last minute deals, no problem. Investor deals are no issue and nobody is ever denied. Call Robinson Insurance Group, 215-918-2555. That's 215-918-2555. I can't stand this traffic. I need a vacation. Slip away to Siesta Key in Sarasota, Florida. You can stay at one of our vacation rentals at the number one rated beach in the United States. Check out GoSiesta.com where you can rent a fully furnished vacation rental for less than the cost of a stinking hotel room. Check out GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. That's 863-2-SIESTA or GoSiesta.com. GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. I'm going! Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We're going to talk about some really interesting things now. Jeremy and I put a huge bid on a development in Florida. And we also, uh, Jeremy wants to talk about why he's going to get his real estate license in Florida. Well, the two are very related. Yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. We made an offer to buy a portfolio of properties, and it's all within the same building. It's like 10 condos in a building, and it's at a phenomenal location. And uh, 
the offer was actually on eight of the ten, and the the purchase price, the offer that we put in was for two point eight million. So uh, I did the math, <laughs> and if you two point eight million, uh, if you multiply that by three percent, you're talking eighty six thousand dollars. Did I get that right? Two point eight million times three percent. Eighty four thousand dollars in what? Eighty four thousand dollars, and what the three percent is the real estate agent's commission. So, the agent that we have on this deal for, is going to make eighty four thousand dollars. Now, granted, whatever split he has with his broker and whatnot, but um, I figured, you know, for the cost of getting a real estate license and some time, it's worth my while. Now, I have to go. Florida's a little different. I think it's like a hundred hours of class, and I have to go down and get my fingerprints done, and I have to. Uh, it's weird. You have to. Take 60 hours of class, then take the test. And after you pass the test, take 40 hours more of class. That's weird. So it's a little different than Pennsylvania. Yeah, whatever they do, they do. You just have to do it. But, uh, you know, it's uh, for – heck, I mean, the next deal we put in, we're going to save that money. So I would say if we're we, – we probably could even ask to have a referral on these deals too. We should do that. For the, we anyway, did ask, didn't meantime. we? We did. I don't know about this one. We asked for it. Did we? Oh, we'll demand it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We're, I know, Phil, you were looking for some stuff to have – I'm a, a house principal for in the yeah. deal, and I have a license, so yes. Yeah. Well, I'm a license agent in Pennsylvania, and uh, Jeremy never really needed to get his because, number one, he owns his own real estate office. You don't need to have a real estate license. You don't need to be a broker to own an office, although a lot of people think that you do. I always tell people you don't need to be a doctor to own a hospital. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's a good, good, <laughs> good analogy. So we decided to do something interesting since he – He's, he's addicted to real estate, and he wants to learn everything there is to know about real estate. One of us has to go get a license in Florida, and we both have to take the same amount of stuff regardless of who does it. So I said, well, why don't you go down to Florida and get your real estate license? That way you'll get the opportunity to learn. So the funny part is if I buy anything in Florida, Jeremy is my realtor, even though I'll be the one living in Florida, and he'll be the one living up here. And if he buys anything in Pennsylvania, I'll be his realtor, but I'll be in Florida, and he'll be up here. That's kind of funny, because we, ju- yeah. we just do mail-off closings, right? <laughs> yeah. We, you know, with well, actually, saying. no, it makes sense, because the buyer is, is then in the in the correct state. <laughs> it's just the agent representative that's, that's across state lines here, so it's pretty funny. Well, it depends where we're buying. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. It could, it could get a little confusing, but no, it makes sense, so. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, it is a no-brainer. I think I'm going to do like the online one. I, I know there's some online classes that yeah, you get don't pretty be, boring. You don't want to be away from your family that long. Yeah, it's it's yeah. like 100 hours. So I think uh, there's an online version that actually has a guy like on a. It's almost like a YouTube video, and then it has slides as well. And then there's a testing, and it seems to be pretty good. I you know I I've heard of uh, other ones online where you're just going through slides yourselves and just reading the reading the text on the slides, which to me would be boring as heck. But uh, I'll give it a try. We'll try it this way and, and, and uh, see if the learning, you know, I, I like watching YouTube videos. You can learn lots of things on, you can do an appendectomy learned on YouTube yeah, <laughs> practically. I, well, it's funny you Change mention the that because I comment. always tell people, people always say, well, how do you know how to do all this stuff? I go, well, actually, I have a doctorate from the University of YouTube. YouTube University. Yeah, right? everything yeah. I know came from YouTube the last 10 years at you, least. Well, you don't need to go to college anymore. You're going to go to Harvard, pay all that money to learn something. Just go on YouTube. It's there. Look up the Addicted to Real Estate YouTube channel. There's a ton of videos. How many videos do they have out on the YouTube channel now? It's got uh, over 500. Just right? the Addicted to Real Estate channel alone is about 450 videos. Oh. And then I have I have several other channels that I have videos on. I have a ch- bunch of uh, videos for Executex Suites. I have... A bunch of Go Siesta videos. I have a lot of lot of videos out there. Hey, Macaroni, have you seen our uh, YouTube channel? Macaroni, not yet, but now I know that you guys yeah. have a YouTube channel. I definitely want to check it. You got to check out. You got to check what? Okay, anybody listening out there, you have to check out the video where Phil is dressed up as one of his great ancestors. What is the name of that video? Do you remember? Um, it's Nicola Falcone. He's my great great grandfather. And you got to check out that macaroni. Pull it up, Nico- Nicola Falcone. Yeah, look, look it up. Tell us the uh, name of that video. I don't even remember what I called that. But no, I, I, I believe it was called um, "Don't Wait to Buy the Real Estate." Buy the real estate, uh, and then you're gonna wait. That's it. That's if it. You, if you can spell that. <laughs> yeah, we've we've made some great videos. It's a lot of fun, you know. 
And there's a ton of information out there for people. The intervention one was pretty funny, too. You did, like, an intervention. They were yeah. trying to do an intervention on film. Not a lot of real estate real value estate. on that one, though. <laughs> Just well, entertainment, you know, and having being fun. You know, it's a, it's a it's a great business. You also can have a lot of fun when you love what you do, and uh, you'll see that on Phil's YouTube videos that he he has a lot of fun with it. So uh, we have a green screen studio in the office in Hapro. We had the green screen studio at the Executex Suites, the uh, executive office center that Phil owns, and it's um that's pretty neat. You know, be able to it's it's amazing how you can get yourself out there. Like Phil just shot a video of this property we have in in a Bustleton section. Put it right on YouTube for everybody to see, so you can actually do a walkthrough video tour of the property. And uh, I would say that you know they say a picture is worth a thousand words. How many words is a video worth? Yeah, more than that. You don't really <laughs> even need to go look at the house after yeah. you look at that. Just look video. at the video. Yeah. I mean, I walk you through the whole thing. If you're going to buy it for sure, you need to go. But you you, you definitely get the uh, the whole concept of what the house is all about. We're talking about Florida stuff, and and I would say. What you just said there is uh, something that we do often that most people don't do is a lot of people go and they go look at the house and then they put in an offer. We do the opposite. We put in the offer and then we go look at the house. And that's um, when you're buying in Florida, that's, you know, we want to know that we, we're not going to fly down there to check out a deal we can't buy. So um, it's it's good practice to try to work out the deals. And, and you don't know exactly the numbers. If the person accepts your offer, then you have an inspection contingency period. Then you can go back and say, geez, it needs more work than I thought now that I've seen the place. And uh, you can go always go back and renegotiate the numbers. Heck, people do that with us. <laughs> when they go through our properties, they always renegotiate the numbers, right? Yeah, well, when you get experienced enough in this business, running out to look at the properties isn't always the most important thing. It depends. In this case, I knew I was going to buy this property no matter what it looked like. You know, it could have been a mud shack. Well, if you're, and if you're buying an income, walls. if you're buying an income property, you have to look at the numbers and say, does the income make sense? Sure. Yeah, there should be, it could be things that need repair and updating, but uh, at the same time, if the numbers make sense from a cash flow perspective, you know, we're going to buy it. We're going to put an offer in, and then we're going to go inspect it after the fact. So, so consider that when you're going to make multiple offers on houses, get an offer accepted before you go look at the property and make your offer contingent upon inspection. So uh, last week, Jeremy and I went to Florida. We went there for about five days. And, you know, people think that real estate investors are uh, walking around. And I, I don't really know what everybody thinks. But I, the perception is is that we're, uh, you know, we have this real scientific method of how we do business. And if you were hanging around with us in Florida for those five days, I think you'd be rather shocked to see how we actually do business. We we know a ton of people. We know about a ton of properties. We know a bunch of realtors. We know the geographic areas where opportunities exist. And we just went out running, meaning we just we just left the house in the morning and we went out and looked at deals and looked at deals and went to open houses and talked to private lenders and talked to agents. And we just beat the street is the best way to say it for five days straight. And in the five days that we were down there, we bought a flip that we're buying for $530,000, which we, after we're done fixing it up, a clean and sweep, another clean and sweep, we probably can sell it for about 850000 We also put in a bid for these eight units, and that's going to be a really exciting thing. That's almost a $3 million purchase. We went down there. The main reason we went down there was to investigate this tiny homes park that we're going to buy and we came out of there unanimously deciding that we're definitely going to proceed to settlement and if all that wasn't enough we also found uh, $300,000 from a private lender that they're going to lend us money at 7% and we're going to use that money to replace the 10% money that we have on some of our Florida houses so we were and we also found a couple of other deals like a condo we found out about and another house that we found out about. But those aren't really worth talking about at this point. They're a little early. Well, I'll tell you what. The, the one thing that is worth talking about about the condo deal was how we came about it. This is how easy it is. I saw a guy on his laptop in a place that we were eating lunch. And I said to the guy, you look familiar. Are you in the real estate business? And, of course, I'm wearing my addicted to real estate name tag. And he says, no, I'm not in the real estate business. I'm in the uh, homeowners association management business. So I, I paused a second and was wondering why that's not real estate related. Sounds but, pretty real estate related to me. But I said, oh, you're the you're you're in charge of a homeowners association management 
any condos that you have that haven't paid their dues that are way behind that might need you might need our help buying them. And he gave me, he said, yeah, go check out A106 in this condo development. And uh, sure enough, we went, and it was a, a condo that they had foreclosed on that they need something to do with. So we're investigating that right now. It's not under contract, but just goes to show you, you just talk to people. All I said to the guy was, are you in the real estate business? You look familiar. And that's what came out of it. We actually got a, a nice little tip on a house. This house has a dock right behind it that you can rent the dock for like $400 a year. And uh, that dock... You basically go out to the end of this little canal, make a right, and you're in, in the intercoastal waterway. You know how much I've been asking us to to buy a house that has a boat dock yeah. so we can buy a boat and go water skiing every time we're down there. How about a houseboat? No, yeah, no, not I fast enough to water ski. Well, we, if we can rent it out, I'm interested. But <laughs> I, I want I want a, uh, a boat that we can water ski off. So the moral to the story, guys, is you're, you're listening to two guys talk about real estate. We have a combined experience of over 40 years investing in real estate and our strategy for you to find deals is talk to people wow difficult Woo, it's tough this is tough right anybody can do this business anybody Especially, even macaroni yeah even macaroni could do it he probably will pretty soon when he sees how uh, when we start coming in here driving bentley's and stuff he's going to probably uh really want to get involved so uh we're coming to the close to the end of our show if there's anybody out there that's in the real estate business and you have some kind of uh, service that you can provide to the investors and the agents who listen to this show, you could possibly be a sponsor on this show or maybe even a guest. Give me a call at 267-988-2000 if you'd like to entertain being a guest on this show, being an advertiser on this show, 267-988-2000. I also wanted to remind the listeners that uh, my new book will be free today, Friday, and Saturday up to August 27th, and I'm cutting it off. And you just go to Amazon and look for How to Buy Houses with None of Your Own Money by Phil Falcone. How to Buy Houses with None of Your Own Money by Phil Falcone. Be sure to put your name and email address into addictedrealestate.com to find out about our meetings, to find out about deals we have going on that you can get access to before anybody else does, before they go on the MLS. And... Uh Put your name and email address in there, and you'll stay in tune to all the things we have. And the next meeting is uh, September 14th, Maggie's Waterfront Cafe uh, at the Linden Avenue Boat Docks in Northeast Philadelphia by the Academy Road exit of I-95. I'm Phil Falcone from Addicted to Real Estate, and thanks for listening to the today's show. Have a great weekend, everybody. You know that's all right. Yeah, that's all right. Cause you know that's all right.